Thank you for staying with us. We go straight into the meat of the matter, like I like to call it. Now, uh, accusations of budget padding have, have swirled around the National Assembly, that's Nigeria's National Assembly, as Senator Abdul Ningi uh, from Bauchi State alleged a colossal three trillion naira dif uh, uh, difference, actually, uh, between the budget which was passed by the lawmakers and the one being implemented by the presidency. Now, the senator further alleges that the existence of uh, duplicated projects and a lack of transparency in the allocation of funds to, uh, you know, to senatorial districts. However, the Senate had denied these accusations, suspending Senator, senator Ningi for three months. Let's take a look at uh, this report by News Central's correspondent and Abuja Bureau Chief Amadin Uyi. It was a chaotic session on the floor of the Senate. Lawmakers took turn to express their view over the allegations by Abdul Ningi, who had claimed that the Senate had padded Nigeria's 2024 budget. I think would be uh, Senator Ningi, who I respect a lot, has a duty even to his own children that he will not be the man who will be in the reported in the front pages of newspapers and electronic media all over the world and say something that he found out is not true. Allegations have been made against Senator Abdul Ningi. I think it's only fair for us to give him time or to give him chance to defend himself. This thing has happened. <coughs> it has happened. And Ningi was wrong. I told Ningi in here that he made a mistake, that he should stand up and apologize to us first, then apologize that, look, this even figure that I'm looking for, three trillion, is here. What my big brother, distinguished Senator Abdul Ningi, who I respect so well, planned to do or set out to do was tantamount to a civilian coup. I have here a copy of the last three budget that was passed, 2021, 2022, 2023. All the details of these agencies I've mentioned are not contained in this document. So for my brother who have put up a consultant to look into this budget and have reported that 25 trillion was approved by the Senate, it's not been fair to the Senate. Though many lawmakers were upset, Senator Ningi was given an opportunity to defend himself. Please, 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 can you allow me to speak? Mr. President, perusing through the budget, first, we discover sabungous anomalies of repetition. We discovered some senatorial districts in this particular document, some senatorial districts have up to 120 billion. However, the Senate took a voice vote where majority voted for his suspension. The Senate hereby places distinguished Senator Abdul Ningi on suspension in respect of his vituperations, falsehood, and unverified report in the in the BBC interview, including other media or, or houses, and is therefore suspended for a period of three months from partaking in events in the Senate or being found in the prisons of the National Assembly for the next three months. Senator Ningi, who was also accused of using the platform of the Northern Senators Forum, resigned from the position following the suspension by the Senate. In Abuja for News Central, I am Amadin Uyi. Well, that report was put together by News Central's correspondent Amadin Uyi, who will be joining us very shortly. And uh, so many questions have been raised, you know, concerning this development. A lot of people have said that 
um, they would have loved for Ningi to have been given the chance to defend himself, which they said they did. But in the middle of his speaking, he was also shut down. So a lot of people are saying, did he have evidence? And if he did not, and you know, the Senate claimed that it was wrong, what is the Senate's evidence? Because we're just hearing that you were wrong, you know, you didn't do your due diligence, but we're not hearing the part of the other side. So a lot of questions have, have been raised. And because of that, we'll now be joined by New Central's correspondent and Abuja bureau chief who did that uh, amazing report, Amadin Oyi, um, joining us from the Federal Capital Territory. Thank you so much, Amadin, for joining us. Thank you very much. All right, uh, Amadine, before we even um, go further, now we understand that the Senate in Nigeria is largely responsible for, uh, you know, good governance and order in the Federation. And uh, we've, for a long time, we've heard about budget padding and the, uh, you know, the concept surrounding it. Now, another uh, senator has brought up this issue, and it's an allegation of 3.7 trillion naira, which shouldn't is not something that can just be made up, or should not be something that can be made up. But allegedly, he was wrong. So uh, let's take a look at the concept of budget padding in the Nigerian parlance and how that has been attached to uh, the Senate for a long time, not just the Senate now, the Federation generally. Uh, what, what do we make of the concept of budget padding in Nigeria? OK, uh, first of all, if you understand the duties of the Senate, you understand the entire budgeting process from when uh, the appropriation bill is submitted by the president to a joint, uh, to the joint chambers of the National Assembly comprising the Senate and the House of Representatives. It would be very absurd to uh, agree that the concept of budget padding, uh, uh, that uh, the idea of budget padding exists. And I'll tell you why, because technically, according to the duties of the lawmakers, budget padding does not exist. Now, let me tell you why. Now, we have three arms of government. We have the executive, the legislature, and the judiciary. The legislature uh, amends laws and enacts laws for the federation. The executive uh, implements the laws, while the judiciary interprets it in case there is any impasse and there is any need to uh, have to defend uh, the rights of Nigerians or uh, maintain the laws of the country. Now, it is the sole responsibility of the judiciary to enact laws. It is the sole responsibility of the judiciary, to, uh, sorry, the legislature to enact laws. It is the sole responsibility of the legislative arm of, of government to amend existing laws. That is why whenever the president wants to submit a budget, he submits it as an appropriation bill. That bill is submitted to the joint uh, chambers of the National Assembly, where you have the Senate and the House of Representatives. Now, according to the constitutional obligations of the legislature, any time there is a process of lawmaking or a process of amendment, what they do is that they deliberate. They remove clauses that uh, feel are not right, they add clauses which they feel are right. So when the executive wants a law enacted, they submit it to the legislature as a bill. It is called an executive bill. And the budget falls under this. It is called an appropriation bill. Now, the duties of the legislature is to sit down, look at that submission of the executive arm, look at it line by line, in between the line, behind the line, in front of the line, and beside the line. And whenever they feel that uh, maybe an agency is underfunded, it is within their own rights to increase the budget. And whenever they feel that projects have been allocated and those projects are over, overpriced, it is within their own rights to reduce the sum submitted by the executive. That is why I say when you talk about, look at the duties of the lawmakers, technically budget padding does not exist because they have a right when that bill is submitted by the president, they have a right to interrogate the agencies involved. They have a right to call the chief executives of the agencies involved. 
They even have the right to allocate a zero budget to an agency that they feel has not complied with their summons. So when they are performing that duty by either increasing or reducing, you cannot say they, are, they have performed the act of budget okay. padding, whether they increase it, because they are acting within the confines of their obligations and their mandates as required by the Constitution. Now, you know, Nigeria is a funny place where sometimes the politicians like to beat the drums. Nigerians want to listen to the drums and dance, but sometimes they do not look at, they do not listen to the rhythm mm. of the music or the lyrics of the music that comes with the drum. So you see, everybody is quick to shout, budget pardon, budget pardon. But now when someone has been saddled with the responsibility, given the authority to increase the budget or reduce the budget, then that person cannot be said to part the budget. Okay, I'm, now, I'm, I'm, hold I'm, I'm, on there. Okay. Now, after, let, let me just add this. Let me just okay. add this. And in apologies, we don't have, we don't exactly have time, so we'll just go let, straight let me, to Let me the, quickly, you know, you just mentioned that Nigeria is a funny place, truly. Um, now, we know that the budget is an executive document, uh, based on, you know, at least what we know concerning the budget. But why should, you know, the legislature now have the right to insert items and figures which significantly alter the budget proposal, so to speak. I mean, before the budget was pushed forward, we all saw the figures. It was in the news. It was everywhere for everybody to see. Um, it was debated upon. And now we're hearing that certain figures have been infused into the budget that were not there before. Now, uh, Bernard, that question has been asked right from the time of President Olusegun Obasanjo. I've covered the parliament for over 10 years. Hmm. And the argument at a point in time when it was brought uh, during the time of President Olusegun Obasanjo, when Obasanjo asked that question, the lawmakers told the president, if you are uncomfortable with us adding what we feel is right, go to court and let the court interpret whether we are acting within our responsibility. Remember what I said. That is why I said if you don't understand the entire process. Now, there are two arms sitting down and looking at the budget. When they submit, they conclude their work. There's what is called a gavel to gavel, where the House of Representatives Appropriation Committee and the Senate Appropriation Committee, both of them will sit down on a round table. And the Senate says, we have, we, our budget final conclusion is $27 trillion. The House of Reps says, our final conclusion is $26 trillion. Both of them will harmonize and come with a common figure. Now, when they do that, the budgeting process does not end. What happens is that when they now conclude and get a harmonized figure, they push it back to the executive because it is the president's right to look at it and say, this is what I submitted. And based on what I submitted, this was what was returned. I have a right to either sign it. But remember that the moment Mr. President signs it, it becomes an act of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. That is why even when the president does not implement the budget, what happens is that the lawmakers can impeach him. It's an impeachable offense because it is now a law of the Federal Republic of Nigeria where you are mandated. That is why you see towards the end of every budgeting year, the lawmakers sit down and say, let us look at the execution and implement, uh, implementation of that budget. How many percent was approved? Was it done intentionally? Was it done due to scarcity of funds? Was it done because whoever was implementing decided to take Nigeria and Nigerians for granted? That is why I said technically, this debate has been on. It was on during the former presence of the Senate when Obasanjo was president. Okay. It was on during uh, Yahadua time and when uh, the Meiji Bank Kole and others were All right. speakers of the House of Representatives and, and it keeps on coming Okay, on so on. Let's, let's focus now on um, the allegations of the you know, budget padding of 3.7 uh, trillion naira. Now, if we're being very factual and realistic, a lot of people have thrown their weight behind um, Senator Ningi, including a civil organize, or a civic organization budget, uh, which re uh, recently said that um, they shouldn't have suspended him. If we're looking at it, uh, you know, factually, Senator Ningi represents the Bauchi Central uh, Senatorial District of Nigeria. So for three months, it, what it means is that the people in that area would not be adequately represented. So a lot of people are saying that 
Instead of suspending him, why not just do due diligence, you know, have your independent investigation? Because, again, after his allegation, what they kept saying was it was false. But we did not see any evidence on the part of the Senate to counter his allegations. Now, he was trying to give his own um, evidence. He was shut down. But the Senate did not counter it with evidence. And this is something that we have been talking about in Nigeria for a long time, the lack of accountability. How do we know that the Senate is right? How do we know that Ningi was wrong? So people are saying that as opposed to suspending him, they should have done an independent investigation, which will be transparent for the media and the people generally. So do we, would we say that it was right? to have suspended Ningi. Because let's also bear in mind, and this is me playing the devil's advocate, that what he said might have really, you know, implicated the Senate. It would have been bad for the Senate if it was wrong. And some people also said that Senator Ningi was saying that because he was aggrieved because of the supposed millions of naira that was being shared that did not get to him. So there, there are lots of conspiracy theories. But at the end of the day, was the Senate right to have suspended him? Or should they have carried out an independent investigation? No, I... I... I, I want to be very careful in, 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 in making this submission about the uh, legality and non-legal illegality of what the Senate did. The Senate has... Oh, uh, seems we've lost some communication yeah. with Amadine. Okay. Uh, it does seem like we've lost communication with Amadine. Uh, he was trying to explain, to respond to your question yeah. of whether... Um, Senator Nigi should have been su su suspended, suspended or whether there should have been an independent investigation. Now, um, it's two things, and I love the question, by the way. Now, can there be an independent investigation while he is still a sitting senator, while he's still on his seat? Or um, will he have to vacate the seat temporarily um, while the investigation is ongoing? It seems we have Amadine back. Um, Amadine, are, are you still there? Okay. Amadine, can you hear us, please? Okay, seems we still I don't have think issues. We All right, yet. Amadine, we may need to move on from there. You know, so um, I'm not expecting that you answer the question, but I think that's where the line is. Falling. No, but let, let me be there so while the investigation is ongoing. What I would have expected mm. was whether or not he was going to be suspended for. <laughs> Again, right, it shouldn't even be a thing that we're talking about. It should, like I said, um, the Senate is there for a reason, right? And the people need to know what is happening. Mm. So if that is coming up, I'm not sure, but I want to believe that that amount of money cannot just be made up out of nowhere. So if that is coming up, it's something that should be looked into while he's still on sit. And if it's found that he was wrong, and maybe he was just saying that because he was bitter about the fact that some monies were shared, maybe. which again, which is a, a whole ball different, game, a whole different, different ball game that we're, we're not even going to go into. But if it's found that he was wrong, then maybe suspended or, or altogether dismissed mm. and replaced. Because again, it's now looking like a game of it's just you and me against each other that's within the Senate. They don't care about the people because if you cared, you would not suspend someone representing a whole no constituency. Yeah, yeah. And then for three months, those people will have, have no any, representation. Yeah, yeah, representation. And, you know, it, it, from what we've, we've heard, some of the uh, Senate members did mention that um, uh, Senator Ningi is trying to incite some things that shouldn't be. But what they did is also going to incite something because if the people of Bielsa, um, uh, what was it called now? If that region Bauchi, decides that, you know what, Bauchi, uh, apologies, if they decide that, okay, fine, you have taken away the person representing us without replacing it with, with someone else, we want to protest. Mm -hmm. That's inciting something else. So I want to believe that even if Senator Ningi was wrong or even if the Senate was wrong, there's a different way they would have gone uh, about this because now it's looking like this is just the Senate being defensive. You just shut it down saying that it was wrong. We have no evidence. Again, we have no proof that it was wrong. And trust Nigeria, because we always lack accountability, this issue will go down without resolution. Exactly. And uh, just as we, as we wrap this up, um, you know, it would have been good for Senator Ningi did actually say um, that there were some um, duplications, you know, in the budget. Uh, there were some monies that uh, came from nowhere and, and were infused in the budget. Talking about the investigations that you are suggesting should have been made, I think some of those documents or the documents or the pages in the documents where he claims that there were duplications, there were yeah. um, inserts of things that were not there before, should be made public for people to see. Exactly. You know, and then counter end, it. And from, the, from their end, and then they counter it exactly. exactly. If it's not true, they counter it. If it is true, then we see that um, his allegations were actually correct and, and we see where we go from there. But again, like you said, this is Nigeria. Uh, we have cases rise this is and Nigeria. cases fall. <laughs> Uh, okay, I think we still have Amadine. Uh, Amadine, thank you. Thank you. Are, are you there? Can you hear us? 
I can hear you loud and okay. clear. Okay, I mean, unfortunately, we wrapped up the conversation without you. Um, but you know, in one minute, can you tell us what you think will be the conclusion or the outcome of all of this? We've seen cases like, well, not like this, but similar cases being swept under the rug, and nobody says anything about them. What do you think will be the likely conclusion of this particular case eventually? Now, uh, first of all, I think Senator Ninge has only one option. If he feels aggrieved, he should go to court. But the submission that the Senate did not defend himself, themselves, if you listen to the speech of Senator Solomon Olamilekon, who is the chairman of the Committee on Appropriation, he made it very clear when he, because it is his committee that is responsible. And he said it very clear that there are some agencies that are on first line charges. The breakdown of their budgets is never put in the final proposal. Those are agencies that require a lot of operations and where fundings can be gotten from external sources. Some of them are revenue generating agencies that will need funding to boost their revenue drive. You talk of agencies like the customs, FIRS, NNPC, CBN, and others. So it is so Senator Lamileko alleges that the extra three point something billion that which uh, Senator Niki was saying that there were no breakdown belong to those agencies. Now it is it, it is within the right of Senator Niki to prove that that submission is wrong. If he feels he has been wrongly treated by his colleagues, he can approach the court to interpret uh, the Senate's, uh, uh, the interpretation of the Senate's powers, mm. whether they have a right to suspend him or not. All right, Amadin Uyi, thank you so much. Our Abuja Bureau Chief and our correspondent all the way from the Federal Capital Territory. Thank you once again for joining us, Amadin, and uh, we will continue to reach out to you for the conclusion of this story. Hopefully, it favors the people of Nigeria because we are most important, not one senator and not the Senate chamber itself. Thank you very much, Amadine. Thank you very much.